A warm morning to each one of you who are seated here. Good morning. Good morning. And happy Sabbath to all those who are seated here and to those who are watching us online. Hopeside Community Church extends a warm greetings to our, to our Sabbath School service this morning. And we'd like to welcome Mr. Daniel Borde. Well, welcome sir to our Sabbath School service this morning. Hope you have a good time. And with that said, let us all sing our opening song, What a Wonderful Savior, song number 335, What a Wonderful Savior. we thank you for the gift of life, for the mercy and grace that you have shown towards us throughout this week. Father in heaven, we thank you that we want to give you thanks for helping us recover from our sickness. Father, it's purely a mercy and grace that we are still alive. Father in heaven, as we all gather here together to praise and worship your name, we pray, Father, that our worship will be acceptable in our sight, be with all our visitors for, to, for this morning, we pray that they will have a blessed Sabbath, be with all those who are still on their way. Please, Father, may this worship be acceptable and may we show reverence throughout this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath to each and every one of you, once again. So today's mission spotlight is Sabbath test in Malawi. It is written by, it was contributed by Sharon Nandolo. Um, 
uh, it's an African name. So sorry if that lady is uh, listening, hearing this. I'm sorry for mispronouncing your name. A college in Malawi created a consternation among Seventh-day Adventist students by scheduling final exams on the seventh day Sabbath. Lucy was distressed. She and other Adventist students at the state-owned Kirk uh, Kargona Teacher Training College had received scholarships to become teachers, but now their future seemed uncertain. The Adventist students gathered to discuss their dilemma. The year was 2006. Malawi was facing a food shortage that had prompted the cash trapped government to ask state colleges to reduce the number of days that students were on campus. As a result, student Lucy's college had moved up final exams previously scheduled for Monday and Tuesday to Saturday. The Adventists decided to ask the college to reconsider the day of exams and several went to the director's office. Their appeal was rejected. Worsening matters other students began to mock them over their beliefs. Lucy watched in dismay as classmates after classmate bowed to the pressure and agreed to take the exams on Sabbath. But she and three others, others stood firm. Oh, they were like Danny and his three friends. They would honor the Lord of the Sabbath. They prayed and went to the director's office to appeal for a second time. At the office, Lucy felt shamed and insulted. She was reminded that she was privileged to have a state scholarship and told to study for the sake of her children, whom she was raising after her husband's recent death. The humiliation did not change Lucy's mind. She believed God would help. The second appeal was rejected. Lucy and her three classmates kept on praying and they asked the district pastor to pray. The pastor spoke with the president of the Adventist church in Malawi, who in turn asked the state authorities to intercede. Adventists faced Sabbath exams across Malawi. Abruptly, the college rescinded its decision and returned the exams to their old schedule. The sudden change sowed confusion on campus, but all the students and faculty knew one thing, the prayers of four faithful Adventists had been answered in a powerful way. God intervened, said Lucy Nirenda, who passed the exam and became a teacher. She, he has promised that he will never forsake his own. Lucy loves to claim God's promise in Deuteronomy 31, 6. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is one who goes with you, he will not leave you nor forsake you. From New King James Version. Isn't it such a powerful testimony that we are learning today at this time of uh, need that when people are failing in faith, that this uh, testimony should encourage each one of us to stand up for God and to do His will, be what may. Just ask God for the courage to stand before him and he will strengthen us in all that we do and say. May God bless. Amen. Uh, that's a beautiful vision spotlight. And, uh, and I'm very much encouraged by that. And, uh, uh, in fact, standing for the Lord is always uh, the best thing that we can be able to do, right? And uh, God is on infinite mercy will be able to guide us through. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, let's get into the Sabbath School uh, lesson today. And uh, uh, today we are, are going to do, deal with a very important thing. I'm going to summarize the whole uh, uh, concept of uh, what the lesson has in store for us. And we're very happy uh, uh, Brother Daniel Bode is with us, and uh, uh, so thank you for joining, and hope your contribution also will enable and strengthen, okay, our faith also 
okay, as we go through the Sabbath school lesson today. Uh, before we begin, I think so, let's seek the Lord in prayer. Our gracious God in heaven, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you, we glorify your name. Uh, as we go through the Sabbath school lesson, may your uh, spirit empower us so that we might be able to discern, understand, and uh, certainly, your oh Father, uh, we might be able to walk in it. May your name be magnified and glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Our very important lesson that we can be able to okay, deal today is entitled as God's Covenant with Us. Uh, the whole quarter we hold today with managing for the master till he comes. Right? And uh, today we are in the second lesson. Okay. Uh, okay. God, uh, God in his uh, own infinite mercy will be able to enable each one of us. Sorry. Okay. We are in the third lesson. We are in the third lesson. Okay, which is entitled as the tithing contract. The memory text is taken from bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessings and there will not be room enough to receive it. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. One of, one of the most uh, uh, familiar texts uh, as we read that in Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. And uh, a very important uh, aspect, and uh, this is uh, among the scriptures. I could find this text gives us an opportunity to know who God is all about. Or it gives us an ample opportunity to most probably test God in every angle. Uh, all the other things we taste God okay, in faith, but here God gives us an opportunity to test Him. Okay, he volunteers himself okay, to be tested and uh, enjoy the blessing okay, of uh, our life. Uh, if you have to go to the book of Genesis 14, we know that Abraham had returned from a successful hostage rescue mission in which he had saved this nephew Lot, Lot's family and the other people taken from Sodom. We all know about it. Okay, the beautiful story. Okay, and then the king of Sodom was so grateful for the rescue okay, that he offered Abraham. All the spoils of the battle, Abraham not only refused the offer, but also gave a tithe of all he possessed to a king and a priest called Melchizedek. You know, this is one of the mysterious names in the Bible. Do you know that, sister? Yeah. Very mysterious name. But it has an opportunity to know that Melchizedek is not only the king of Salem, he is also the priest. We have a dual contract for this great king called Melchizedek. Okay, he is not only the king, and he is even the priest. Uh, the important part is when I see the dual application for this uh, great king called Melchizedek, we don't have uh, a real authenticative idea whether this guy was really existing, or uh, was he really being there, or you know, but many theologians do speculate on that regard. But one thing is for sure, when I look into the dual application of being a priest and a king, one thing goes to my mind is Jesus Christ, who has these two qualities of being not only the king, but also what? The priest. But it, it says, the Bible says it very clearly that he gave one tenth of his position, okay, for this king and the priest. You know, immediately after Abraham striking experience, the Lord said, Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your exceeding great reward. I mean, you have a lot of rewards on this earth, right? When you pass your exams, uh, you know, we have gold medalists, silver medalists. When you run the race, you have, you know, all the medals being given and uh, a whole lot of stuff. Okay, when you complete your doctoral program, you, there's a reward. Okay, when you work very hard, there is a reward for everything, there is a reward. But this is a very special reward from God and God himself. I want to challenge you today, the reward on this earth is perishable. But the reward from God is always eternal. Amen. And the reward from God, when it comes, it is such a changing experience in your life uh, that you will never experience that for the reward what you receive on this earth. Because the Bible says the reward what we hear, we get from this earth is temporary. But the reward, what you get from the Lord, is eternal. And the reward, what you get for eternal, is complete joy. 
Okay, but the reward what we get back on this earth is just a partial joy or the joy just fades away, you know, just fades away. Have you experienced that in hand? And the Bible is absolutely very clear for you and me. Eric White writes it so beautifully, men were required to offer to God gifts for religious purposes before the definitive system was given to Moses even as far back in the days of uh, Abraham. Okay, or Adam. Testimonies for the Churches, Volume 3, page 393. Just take from Adam, giving gifts for God. Okay, securing certain things for God. Okay, making God so special in your life. Making God's commands, okay, very special in our life. If you and I could be able to set apart our life, our time, our time, whatever it is, exclusively for God. And I'm telling you that blessing is entirely different that you and I could be able to experience. If you have to go to my country, India, we all know that uh, we do have a separate room called uh, Puja room, right? Okay, <laughs> they, they keep it. Okay, they might not be knowing the truth to the extent what we know, but the sacredness, the way how they do it, it is so beautiful. The reverence they have, uh, okay, for God, okay, at the time that they give to Him, it is, it is so beautiful. So, what is this tithe all about? We are talking about the tithing contract. Okay, having a contract with God. Okay, and uh, what is the tithe equals a tenth? You know, dictionary defines, uh, okay, tithe as the tenth part of something. You know, dictionary uh, defines it. It says that, okay, tenth part of something. Where do you think so the dictionary got this one from? All Obviously, okay, from God's word. Okay, that's what, uh, okay, he says. It talks about the 10, 10 percent. The definition is likely taken from the Bible directly because tithe is simply returning 10 percent of our income or increase to God. Okay, we don't give God anything. Can we give God anything? Absolutely no. What all we have is His. Our strength is His. Okay, the very world that we are living in is not ours. Okay, it is the gift from God. The breath of life is His. What about our spouses? <coughs> It is his grace that he has given to us. What about the house that we have? Okay, what he has been able to bestow. So, nothing on this earth that we have, we own. Many times have you seen, okay, this is my house. This is my money. This is my job. I have earned. Okay, this is my degree. Many times when I think about life on this earth, I always say that uh, uh, nothing is mine. You tell me what is mine. We are born on this earth. Who gave that life? God. Nothing is ours. But when we talk about tithe again, we can't give anything to God because He is the owner. We have just been able to be managers. And that's what the whole quarter is talking about. Managing for the master. So there is a job given to you and me on this earth to manage. So even our finances has to be managed. And that can be happen only provided if we have an opportunity to give the tenth for him and him alone. You know, we understand that we have belongs to him in the first place. Everything what we gain, the first place has to be given to God. You know, the tithing legislation given to Israel at Mount Sinai points out that the tithe is holy and belongs to God. Why do you think so? Okay. Tithe. Uh, one tenth has to belong to God. Why do you think so? Do you, uh, uh, anyone has uh, any any comments or anything that you can be able to share that that belongs to God? It is holy and that belongs to God. Why do you think so? He says that statement. Have any idea? Because, um, because I feel uh, why it belongs to God is because God wants this particular uh, group of people uh -huh. uh, to know uh -huh. it's not a, it's not that the message is only for them mm. through them uh -huh. uh, it is uh, telling the world that all your trust mm. in worldly matters mm -hmm. means nothing to you mm -hmm. it it solely it is means to say he is the provider mm -hmm. 
and uh, he is the one who takes care of all your needs mm -hmm. no matter what you are mm -hmm. just be the chosen race mm -hmm. and it's like the levites uh -huh. mm -hmm. the good example is the levite that when um, mm. the state of israel was uh, divided with uh, 10 uh, 12 tribes mm -hmm. the one the only tribe that did not get the possession was the levites mm -hmm. so it was that because god had chosen them mm -hmm. and god through them mm -hmm. he wanted to teach the other tribe that he is a provider Okay, beautiful. Thank you very much, sister, for that one. Okay, the other thing that I have in my mind is, just imagine, you know, the tithe is a minimum testimony of our Christian commitment. <laughs> Does that make sense? It is what? Okay, a minimum testimony of our Christian commitment. When you talk about relationship, husband and wife is what? It's a commitment. When you talk about tithe one tenth, it is a commitment. It is a minimal commitment. God is anticipating with you and me. And as I told you, the first mention of tithe is mentioned in Genesis chapter 14. Talk about Melchizedek where Abraham been able to give that one tenth. Okay, that's the first time it has been able to be mentioned. Okay, and the second time that I could be able to see about is, uh, do you remember any other person? Who promised God of uh, one tenth? After Abraham. Okay, go a little bit further from Isaac. From Noah? No, no, Isaac. After Isaac. Uh, it was Jacob. Jacob, you know, well, what was the scenario? Yeah, what did, why, why, why he made a minimum commitment he made? Okay, what was the commitment that he made? That when he ran away from his brother. Absolutely right. Okay, uh, he was there on Mount, and uh, there God blesses him, and he sees, you see, the okay, the ladder and the angels going for, you know, and uh, God blesses him in every angle. What does he say there? Yes. Lord, if you take care of me, take care of me, bless me, I'll come, come back again and give one tenth for you. You remember? Yeah. That's the second time that we'll be able to see that in the Word of God. Okay. And I told you initially in Malachi chapter 3 verse 10, that's the only place that you and I could be able to test God. Mm -hmm. Not other places. That is the only place that you can test God. And Jacob puts the trust and test there. And what happens? He is blessed. Blessed. Greatest example that we can find. So if you and I have to be blessed, test him with this minimal commitment. Okay, that's a requirement actually, more than commitment, it's a requirement, okay, to test and see that uh, how God will be able to bless each one. Pastor, but yes. I feel, uh, I don't think it's a, um, I feel it's not like a requirement. <laughs> because the whole uh, uh, gospel of Jesus is only of love. So if I love God, I will give it voluntarily. There is no requirement of it. Okay, I agree with that. Partially, I agree with that, uh, Sister Nalini. Why I said a requirement is, you know, once you are engaged with your spouse, it is not required that, you know, you could be there with a person or you can even just omit yourself. Uh, you know, engage, engagement can be broken, but marriage can't be broken, right? Do you agree with that? Why I say that? Why I say that one is, uh, I have a reason behind it. Engage can be, engagement can be broken. Why not marriage? Okay, marriage can't be broken. Why? Okay, uh, because biblically speaking, okay, if you're committed, you have to commit to the last. That's what I believe. See, there I come to the point. Yeah. Okay, so what I need to say is when I say requirement, like when you are there in a marriage relationship, it's entirely different there from being engaged in every act. Why? Because when you talk about the marriage of the Lamb, that is going to take place when Jesus comes the second time. You see, you know, when I say requirement, it's only because, uh, not that he forces us to be, no. Anything we do on this earth is our choices, whether we like it or not, we make a choice, right? Okay, even in uh, marriage in this 21st century, it is not that you have to stick on to the person. Something happens, you can leave. Okay, there is uh, something called as divorce. Okay, but that's not the way how the Bible describes. That's what I mean. So when I talk about requirement, okay, you 
your commitment for the Lord is so intense because you've already tasted and seen, and you're talking about love, right? That love relationship is so much, whatever it happens, uh, you know, I will make sure that I will do this because you have tasted and seen that the Lord is good, is sweeter than honey. In that context, uh, I feel that once you have tasted, you are not in every angle. Okay? And that, that is no more a requirement. Okay. I agree with you. I'm not saying that, okay, it is no more a requirement. Okay? I, I agree, I agree uh, 100 hundred percent. But what I mean to say is like, you know, it becomes a part and parcel of your life. Even though you don't want to do it, okay? But you know what the implications that we have and you commit yourself completely to that one. So it becomes a part of you. So requirement in the sense like it becomes a part of you. You don't think that you're obligated to do. It is a part of you that you continue to, you know, just reign in the hand, okay? Psychologically speaking. Okay, that's what I feel personally. I, I don't know whether I got the, okay, uh, the, the message in that one. Because if we have to go to the next part, okay, the Bible says it very clearly. Okay, as members of God's family, we want to understand the practice, okay, and His will regarding what to do with our tithe. In the biblical narrative, we learn that three times each year we know about the Passover, right? Number one. Number two is the Pentecost. Right? And then, Feast of Tabernacle. Okay, when we talk about the children of Israel, it was a requirement for them. Right? Okay, that's what it says. It, is a, it was a requirement for them. It was mandatory if they had to be a part of God's children. Right? If not, immediately they were cast out. Especially in the Passover time, if they found even a little bit guilty, you know, they've been cast out in every angle. So, God's people were to travel to Jerusalem, right? They had to travel to Jerusalem to bring their tithes and offering personally and to praise and to worship God. It was a requirement. And that's what it says here. In 2 Chronicles chapter 31, verse 11 to 21. Nehemiah chapter 12, verse 44 to 47. And we all know that Jesus also had to what? When Jesus was born, Mary and Joseph, they were supposed to give something. Why I mean to say this one today for each one of us here is this. In harmony with the biblical central okay, understanding of what the Seventh-day Adventist Church has designated for you and me okay, is this tithe and offering. When we get into the storehouse, when we talk about a church, Okay, we have condensed the whole matter into a church where our tithe and offering is being placed in the church. And from there, it goes to the conference. And from there, you know, it has been distributed. And that's what is being, okay, followed thus far. Okay, and that's what it says even in uh, the, uh, the, the uh, okay, substitute is in harmony with this biblical central storehouse principle. The Seventh-day Adventist Church has designated the local conference mission the unions of the church as a storehouse on behalf of the world church and from which the ministry is paid. For the convenience of church members, tithes and offerings are brought for the local church as part of the worship experience. Through some use online giving, the local treasury then forwards the tithe to the conference storehouse. The system of tithing management outlined and ordained by God has enabled the Seventh-day Adventist Church to have a worldwide and growing impact of the world. And that's what is been able to, okay, be able to say for each one of us. Any, any, anything that you have uh, in this regard, uh, anything that you want to, okay, contribute, okay, you're most welcome to share, okay, with us. Go a little bit further. Uh, what is the purpose of tithing? To provide for the... Mm -hmm. For the priestly clan. Okay, to the priestly class. Okay, what's the other name for the priestly class? <coughs> Levites. Levites, absolutely. If you have to go to the book of Psalms, chapter 24, verse 1, uh, okay, we know that because God is the owner of everything, mm -hmm. He obviously doesn't need the money, does He? No. No, absolutely no. But because the tithe is His, because He said this is secluded and that is holy, that has been separated. He tells us what to do with it, right? Okay. 
And that is to use his time for the support of the gospel ministry and therefore the needs of the ministers are taken care of with God's time. So the tribe of Levi, if you have to look into the tribe of Levi, okay, the ministerial force in the Old Testament, the ministerial force in the Old Testament was not given large properties as were the rest of the tribes. That is interesting. No big portion for the Levites, okay, for the tribe of Levi. But Levi was given certain cities, including the cities of refuge. You know, the study of the city of refuge is such an interesting thing. It's so beautiful, okay. And that was being able to give for the Levites with enough land around them for personal gardens. They were supported by the tithes of the others and they themselves also tithe their income. So, even the Levites were not being exempted in giving their tithes of what God has been giving. So, it is not only for, okay, uh, one man tithe. No, it is for every individual who wants to follow God. You know, tithing is absolutely very important because it helps us to establish a relationship, okay, of trust with God. To take one tenth of your income and give it away to technically it belongs to God anyway. Truly, it is an act of faith, and only by exercising it, your faith will be able to grow. That's what it means to say. So, if our faith has to grow, and experience that by giving one tenth to the Lord. And uh, the other reason, okay, uh, for financial faithfulness is to access the promised tangible blessings of God as part of tithing contract. God has promised blessings that are so large that we won't have enough room to receive them. With a surplus, we can help others and help to support the work of God with an offering. And ultimately, I'm telling you one thing, sister. Whatever we earn is not ours. I'm telling you, I've experienced this every time. Give it completely to serve God and to serve others. I'm telling you very honestly, it is such a blessing to be in the hand of God, just in simple faith and trust. Move forward. Everything is taken care of. Last week we all were suffering from a uh, you know, whole lot of stuff. Right? Uh, I'm telling you, I was just remembering God. Miraculously, He healed us. You know, just that way. I just prayed and said, Lord, I don't know what to do. I'm alone. Nothing is there. Nobody is there around me. And I'm here. What to how to go about it? I could still hear the small voice of Christ. And he says, I'm there with you. No need to worry. And slowly I could see the sickness slowly going down and down and down and down and down and down. And today we are perfectly healed. Mm -hmm. But God has been able to do so much for our lives, saved us in every angle. One tenth is nothing. In fact, we have to say, everything what we have is not mine, Lord, it is yours. Use it the way how you want to. Tell me, what should I do with this money? Tell me, what should I do with this life? Tell me, what should I do with the blessings that you are giving me? Have you ever asked God to, you know, show you what you want to do with the blessing, what God has blessed upon you and me? It is only to serve Him for the enhancement of the gospel on this earth. To serve others who are in need. When God he blesses you, it blesses you so that you and I could be a blessing for others. He will show you exactly what to do and how to go about it. So I don't want to urge everyone who are watching online today and each one of us here. Let the Lord's will be done as we offer ourselves and the one time to him so that his name might be magnified because we know that he blesses us in every angle of our life. A honest or a faithful tithe. So what does it mean to be faithful with our tithe? You know, this week we have received several of the constituent elements of the tithe. You know, the amount of what we are supposed to give, one tenth, we all know. And we know, okay, we have to take it to the storehouse, the place from which the gospel ministry are to be paid. Number three, we know that honoring God with the first part of our income is absolutely, okay, very important. And use it for the right purpose to support for the ministry is uh, another way that we can be able to use it. And it is our responsibility as church members to uphold uh, the first three items. It is the responsibility of the storehouse managers to make sure that the tithe funds are used uh, properly. 
Many times we do have complaints that the tithe uh, is not being able to be used uh, the way how it is supposed to be. So we want to urge, uh, you know, the managers, okay, in the church, so that it might be able to be used in the right way, the way how the Lord wanted it to. And of course, uh, unlike our offerings, the tithe is not, okay, discretionary and apart. The tenth and the storehouse are both uh, part of the responsibility. We don't see the parameters God does. If I don't return to the full 10% of my increase, I'm not really tithing. And if I don't bring the 10% to the storehouse, I'm not really tithing either. That's what it says. So that's what it is. the Bible says in Malachi chapter 3 verse 10, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse is God's command. Okay, no appeal is made to gratitude or to generosity. This is the matter of simple honesty. The simple honesty. Because the Bible says the tithe is the Lord's. And it bids us return to him uh, that which is his own. Education, okay, page 138. That's what Sister White writes it in every hand. Okay, so these are the few thoughts that we have when we talk about uh, the tithing contract. Anyone, any questions? Anything that you want to add? Uh, anything that we can be able to, uh, you know, uh, see that we can... Uh, improve ourselves in the faithfulness of our life that we can be able to give God glory and honor. Ultimately, I feel God wants to test our faithfulness. Abraham was a faithful person because he obeyed God. Ultimately, you know, when God gives us Okay, this beautiful book called, uh, okay, the Word of God. It is simply to be obeyed. Don't remove anything. Don't add anything. But just, just simply what? Obey. God is going to test our faithfulness in one way or the other. Let us be faithful in following His footsteps in every angle of our life. Because the Bible says in Psalms 119, 105, 106, the word is the lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. When it reveals us to go and march forward the way how the Lord wants to. And I'm telling you, that will be one of the blessed moments of our life. That will be one of the greatest uh, okay, thing that you and I could be able to experience in the Lord. So tithing also is just the same. It's a requirement. It, uh, okay, let me, let me not uh, say it's a requirement. It, is, it shows the love for the Lord whom you serve. It is that love that you show to the Lord who has given everything. It is that love that you show to the Lord and respect His word. It is love to the Lord that you and I show for the faithfulness that He is faithful till this very day that He has taken, uh, taken care of my life. And your life. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ on this Sabbath morning, I want to urge each one of you in the name of Jesus today. If you have not, today is the day of salvation. May you be able to experience it in every act. May you be able to be a part of it. May you be able to taste and see that the Lord is good, is sweeter than honey, is greater than money. Yes, may we always move forward the way how the Lord wants to and experience His goodness of our life and pass on this goodness to people who come in and out of life and may His name be glorified and magnified as we practice His way of life on this earth till we live and have a last breath on this earth. And that's my prayer for you this morning. Any questions? Any questions that we have? Okay, if not, the Sabbath school offering will be collected.
So before we close, let's seek the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Lord in heaven, we want to thank you for this beautiful words of life which illuminated. Many times we have not been faithful, O Lord, but you are faithful. Yes, Lord, give us a grateful heart that we could follow your footsteps, especially in one tent that you have been able to demonstrate, O oh Father, that our love to you. We want to give a heart, mind, and soul. May you take us, melt us, mold us, and fashion us according to thy will, and help us to be faithful to the very last breath of our life. Thank you for being with us and answering our prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining for the Sabbath School and uh, we'll just take a break for a few minutes and we'll be back again for the divine. God bless you.